Hello, and welcome to Ants TV. My name is Jack, and today I'm here with Andy. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. Second video in Second synth video. tips. Uh, first one we did oscillators, and next we're going. Where are we going next? Uh, we're going to look at the filter now. So we've got our little ba basic building block of a sound, and we're going to do some stuff to it to uh, to adjust it. So, uh, so we just got our one oscillator sound that we had from the first video. If you uh, watch that one first, so you know where we're up to. Nice. Um, give us a sound of that one. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some processing to it, and we're just going to talk about the filter. So the filter, like its name suggests, is it filters out things from the sound, so it takes stuff away. So the, the main controls that you're going to come across are cutoff and resonance. And what the cutoff does is it takes off uh, it, on a low pass filter, which is like the most common one, it takes mm -hmm. off all the high end. So if you play some stuff and I take down the cutoff, it takes all of that brightness out of the sound. Take it all the way down. It takes it down it's to gone, nothing. Yeah. Um, and then we also have a, a high pass filter, which does the other thing. So it takes off. Uh, so it allows high frequencies to pass through the filter and takes away the bass. So let's hear that. But then uh, with the low pass one at the top here, we also have a resonance control. So what the resonance does is as we're taking as we're taking all of that high end out of the sound, the resonance adds like a volume boost at the cutoff point. So if you imagine sort of like on a graph, you can have this like peak, and as you take down that high end, that peak is sort of sweeping through the frequency. Yeah. So if I add some resonance to go up to about sort of twelve o'clock, yeah. and then we bring down the off uh, the cutoff. Get that kind of like squeaky kind of plasticky sound, which is cool. So uh, yeah, if you play like a bit of a bass line, yeah. and then we tweak that. Yeah. Nice. So you get some cool funky stuff out of that as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other thing as well is that you can choose different slopes of uh, filters and stuff. Mm. So for instance, like uh, we've got it set at the moment on minus 24 decibels. So what that means is it's quite an aggressive filter. So it means that for every octave that we take the filter down, it reduces the high end by 24 decibels. So it's quite a lot. Uh, but then you can have ones that do like 18 or minus 12. So as a quick example, so say if we play, uh, if we play some like chords or something. Yeah, yeah. So this is on 24. Uh. And if I change it to be 12. to 24 it's a bit darker though. yeah yeah big time and that's because it's just like it's, it's less aggressive so instead of being a really sharp slope it's kind of like a, a little bit mild and that's a really cool feature about this keyboard and yeah. and keyboards that have that because often I've, I've found the filter is a lot to do with the character of the synth right totally yeah yeah and absolutely actually on this one the system 8 so we've got a few different types that we can look at actually so this one uh, also comes with emulation, because you get a lot of people talking about, oh, I really love the filter sound of a, a very specific synth. So like this one has got a, a filter sound of the Jupiter 8, which is a really famous Roland synth. And then we also have next to it the, the Juno 106 filter. And if I flip between the two of them while you're playing, in sound like going between them and like mm. so you'll find like different synths will have their own kind of character and uh, you know suit different kind of sounds which is cool and that's I, I think really important to listen to your favourite synth sounds mm. and maybe read up on what keyboards made them yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what how I, it really helped me and I'm still learning you know as you know because I need, yeah, yeah, I need yeah, you guys yeah. here to show me. but I'm trying to all the time connect what this is to a real sound. Mm. So if you can get in your head like, oh, that's the that's the jump sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that's the if you like an acid house track, like what was the equipment? And then look yeah, at yeah. the filter. Often you'll find that puts a lot of character into the sounds you're trying yeah, to. Yeah, acid house is a really good one there. So the sound of acid house is associated with the uh, the filter from the Roland TV three hundred three baseline. Oh uh, And it's 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 got a really distinctive sound as well. So uh, yeah, it can add a lot of character to music. So, uh, and then we can also mess around further with the filter to do with the envelopes, but they're a little bit more complicated. So I think we need to do that on a separate video so that we can have a bit more detail on it. Yeah, and one more thing that 
uh, maybe I, I found hard to is uh, key key follow. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. We, do do we want to do that now, or should we do with that envelope? No, no, yeah, we can talk about the key follow now. So um, key follow is a bit of a bit of a strange uh, thing. So it, you kind of have to think about. Um, I'd have to play it up the octaves. I think it's more how you demonstrate it. Yeah, is that right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you think about if we play like a concert A, yeah. which is like four hundred and forty hertz. Um, if uh, if you think about you taking about all of that high end, eventually you would get to the point where the filter would uh, would overtake that frequency. So you'd have half the keyboard where you'd be getting sound, and then you just wouldn't get anything out of the top end. Yeah, if you yeah, know, which is weird. So what what the keyboard tracking they call it does That's is, it. Uh, is that as you so. It, when you key have it, follow, keyboard tracking. Yeah, when you have it in uh, the 12 o'clock position, it means that the filter's kind of programmed so that it perfectly tracks the filter. So even if you take the filter all the way down, you still get sound all the way at the top of the keyboard and things. And even if we go to like a higher, we can still hear that. Yeah. Just about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, with a uh, keyboard tracking, so if we have that sort of all the way to 12 o'clock, hear it all the way up there and if I take that down we lose it so depending on the kind of uh, yeah the I find it sound. for lead sounds like maybe a little touch here just mm. it has another depth of expression and that's where we're going to get to is that we at the moment we've got very static sounds yeah, yeah, and yeah. we need to get these things moving we need to get people's trousers moving <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, we're going to yeah. go to the next one so I'm going to play you out let's get a sound up oh. Next video coming up from us is going to be Phil's. Thanks, mate. High five. Bum things. Let's do it.